Tonight's episode of The Mick Malloy Show is brought to you by Caltech Service Stations. One thing about being a Caltech Service Station operator, the nicest things happen to you. I was giving the usual Caltech service to my customers the other day, when who should drive up but Sabrina? I recognized her at once, and she recognized me too, and asked me where the Marfac TV demonstrations I do real. I straight away invited her into the office, so she could actually watch one being done. Actually, Sabby, I was just heating this fry pan prior to cooking a hot lunch. And if I just get a couple of samples of grease, then you can do a test for us yourself and prove beyond any doubt that Marfac, under extreme heat conditions, will stand up to it much better than any other grease. My, this fry pan really is hot. And it turned right up. Hmm, my goodness, it really is hot. About 180 degrees, I'd say. That dark one on the left is Marfac. The other is a conventional chassis grease. Gee, look, the other one's beginning to go already. The Marfac hasn't even budged. Can you believe your own eyes? Can't deny it. That conventional grease looks real burned up. There, you see, the conventional grease has just about had it. And the Marfac is still in perfect condition. That's what you call a fair dinkum Caltex product, Savvy. Fair dinkum? Now you're really talking Australian. What do you mean when you say that Caltex products are fair dinkum? Well, I don't think I have to explain fair dinkum to many of our viewers, but for your benefit, Savvy, fair dinkum products mean honest to goodness, super quality, stick on the job Caltex products. The sort of products you want to use in your car. Then it's Caltex for me. Good to be here, good to be alive as we approach the new century. <laughs> okay. Glad somebody's finally yeah. said that. <laughs> Bit of an editorial straight off the bat. Come on, yeah, Hesse, keep them coming. Hello, welcome to the show. Let's uh, meet who's on board. Tony, how are you? Uh, bring on the smut, Mick. Let's see it. <laughs> bring on the smut. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got plenty where that's coming from. Dave. Thanks for dressing up tonight. No worries. Aloha, Mick. <laughs> oh, I actually just come from my uh, shift at Smorgie's Hawaiian restaurant where the smorgasbords go on and on and on. <laughs> that was a paid ad. They do. Hello, Judith. How are you? Well, I'm feeling a little put to shame by Sabrina, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good look, isn't it? Oh, I tell you what, you could stick a couple of books on that shelf. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. No. You're not wrong. Hey, let's get straight into it. There's been some huge news this week. Probably the biggest of all is the uh, Sydney Harbour oil spill. Uh, mm. That was a rather controversial. Can we have a look at the footage? Harbour. There it is. Booms held the great uh, of crude oil. It's not a good look. I think what they're the suggesting at this stage is it's, uh, it's a sabotage. Ended. Have you heard that theory yes. going around? Sabotage. Sabotage. This seems like a harmless practical joke to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the world coming to if you can't pollute the odd harbour? <laughs> That's right. No one got hurt. <laughs> it might be some sort of Melbourne-Sydney uh, rivalry thing, Jeff Kennedy. Kenneth's gone up there and just stuck his head in the harbour. <laughs> but you'd like to think they're going to fashion all that oil and, you know, the dead penguins into the Olympic rings. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, from above, that'll be quite impressive. That would be uh, impressive. Visiting delegates. <laughs> because the eyes of the world are upon us. That's right. <laughs> As we <laughs> approach the new millennium. That's it'd be, right. <laughs> it'd be great if you just lit a match. It'd be fantastic for the Olympics, I reckon. <laughs> There you go, there's your flame. Yeah. You don't, go. don't go near it with the Olympic flame or Sydney's up. That's yeah. a big story. What else we got? Oh, Hillary Clinton. Have you heard oh. about this? Hillary Clinton has, um, Saucy. has had an affair behind Bill Clinton's back. 
And you know what? I always said he was too good for it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he puts up with that, he's under the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Women, You're eh? Right. You're absolutely right. And I've got to say, I reckon she has been up to a bit of mischief. No, I like Because I've got a bit of a card here that, in fact, Team Martin gave to me some time ago. Can we get a bit of a close-up of that? <laughs> it's a beautiful shot. Oh. And uh, I love the fact that they both look like they've got a bit of a drinking problem. But can we get back to Hillary for just a second? Because I think it does actually look like she's wearing a patchwork quilt. <laughs> so my theory is that all she has to do is lie down and she's ready for action. No, <laughs> no. no. A self-sourcing pudding, as Kevin. That's, that's when she was a member of the church. Now, you know what that looks like? Have a look at that. Looks like she snuck into his crew member of the month photo. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of McDonald's. Get out of it. Get out of it. Actually, I've got another photo here of Bill Clinton you might enjoy. Check this one out. <laughs> now, have a look at that. In particular, the highlighted area. <laughs> I'm not sure who exactly he's waving to, but I'm guessing it's chicks. <laughs> oh, all hail the Commander-in-Chief! <laughs> he's just fixing the spinnaker, and now we've finished. <laughs> That's what's, a good uh, look. What's happened to Bill Clinton this week? He's been accused of abandoning the search for uh, the weapons of mass destruction in, mm. uh, in Iraq. That's right. What is it with that guy? He's given up on Iraq, he didn't inhale, he never achieved completion. It's just unfinished business everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. One day you'll finish the job. Hey, here's another big story that's been floating around this week, and it's in regards to genetically modified food. And, oh, look, everyone's yeah. up in arms. Oh, yeah. Dr. Frankenstein's in the laboratory working on a turnip. You know, it's, it's not good. It's not good. And personally, I don't see what all the hoo ha's about, because, um, well, I've been eating genetically modified foods for years. I think perhaps what we might do is organise a movie for tomorrow night. What do you oh, think about that? Yeah. Marvellous. Are you happy to do that? Mm. Yeah. Michael, eat your pee. Oh, do I have to? <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, I don't care. That's my favourite joke of the week. <laughs> There's not too many ways you can get a giant pee into a show, but we've done it. Well done, all. Take the rest of the week off. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, it's clearly all downhill from there. <laughs> Where do you go after you've introduced the giant <laughs> pee? No, I don't know. Did just the kids chuck it in? We've peaked too early. <laughs> Did the kids get their earth ball back, or uh... <laughs> it's still in the office, my oh, Excellent. It's still hey, in Nick, the... uh, <laughs> I think you'll find your royalties from your Eat Your Peas album uh, inside. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you can call a kickback in this industry, Hesse. Hey, while we're talking royalty, that's a great cue. Uh, Queen Mum turned 99 this week. Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah, One is. more year and she gets a letter from her daughter. <laughs> that's true. That's, you know, that's a bit of a letdown, really, isn't it? It gets pretty ugly when the, the Queen Mum uh, has a birthday because someone has to give her the 99 birthday punches. <laughs> bonkers, too. Yeah, yeah. Birthday right. bonkers. And you'd be going her in the dodgy hip, wouldn't you? That's 91. Right. <laughs> but wouldn't it be great to be that old? Because all you'd have to do to impress people would be breathe. Mm. You, know? <laughs> you could be running around with a toilet roll cover on your head and using your dentures as a puppet, and they'd still be going, well, what a remarkable woman. <laughs> yeah. You're right again. And while we're on royalty, here's another huge story. The King of Jordan, and you may or may not have heard of this during the week, the King of Jordan wanted to get closer to his subjects. So he had the great idea of going undercover as a taxi driver <laughs> and uh, driving around Jordan, speaking to the people. And I'm thinking, that's quite an amazing thing to, to do. I was trying to get an image of what the taxi driver would be like, and I reckon it would be a bloke who's going, mate, if I run the country, I'd... Uh... Oh, hang on, I do run the country. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> What's he up to? In fact, I think he's kind of enjoying it. Yeah. I think the experience really kicked in, because uh, have a look at what he did to his throne. <laughs> that's, that's the stress beads. Well, let's see the giant P again. <laughs> well, you know, I reckon our politicians do just the opposite because I think Jeff Kennett has been running around pretending he's a king for some time. So. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, not yeah, funny, but driver. on the edge. <laughs> It's either or tonight, Jack. It's either or tonight. I wonder if John Howard's ever thought of doing this, uh, dressing up as a taxi driver. Mm -hmm. You just have to look for the telephone books in the seat, I presume. But uh, <laughs> That's right. I, I reckon maybe he'd be better off, like, he wouldn't blend in as a taxi driver, maybe he'd be better off going to an accountant's convention, mm -hmm. and then you wouldn't notice him That's at all. True. I reckon. He's too busy dressing up as a prime minister.
Minister. <laughs> hey, uh, here's an interesting story. While we're talking Prime Ministers, did you see Bob Hawke this week? He's looking... I've never seen him looking so fit. Yeah. Check him out. This is quite amazing. <laughs> Come on, Hawkey, what are your legs? They're still springs. <laughs> what are they going to do? Ah, bang it, get out of the drink. Ah. Have a look at this. Have a look at him going the high jump here. This is sensational. Yeah. <laughs> Just having a quick. Have another attempt, Hawkey. Come on. Ah, shit. Ah. Uh, Was that. Was that a little unkind? Oh, no. Not at all. Would you consider that unkind? Because I shouldn't be, because whether you guys know it or not, it's actually National Kindness Week. This week? This very week. Because this is opposed to National Punch a Stranger in the Guts Week. <laughs> that, that was last week, oh. Jude. Read your calendar. No, it's National <laughs> Kindness Week. And I thought, because I've got a bit of a reputation as a, of, as a nasty pasty. That's what I've been hearing on Talkback Radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I thought I'd uh, take the opportunity to, well, address the issue by saying something nice and kind to all the people. Uh, have gone out of their way to help me on this program. Do you think that's appropriate? I think that's lovely. Tony, I'll start with you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your support over so many years. We had great fun on the radio for four sure. years together. When I said I had the show, you put your hand straight up and you said you'd be straight in there. And I'll never forget it. And as long as I'm on the face of this planet, you've got someone you can call at any stage. And as long as I'm here, I'll help you out. Oh, well, thanks, Mick. Yeah, that's, no worries, mate. That's very nice. Wouldn't recognise a good joke if it bit him on his bony white ass. <laughs> <laughs> Judith Lucy, Judith Lucy, Mick Malloy, you are quite amazing. Oh. How long have we known each other now? Oh, we go back. We go way back, and you've always been there for me. I, I do what I can. You have uh, been a constant source of support and love for me, and I just wanted to say I'll, I'll never forget it. If only she could be more like the delightful Donna Bay. <laughs> Bob Franklin. Where's Bob Franklin? Come over here, Bobby. Where is he? Have we got him? Have we got him? Come here, come here and give me a cuddle. Come here and give me a cuddle, Bob. I haven't, I haven't known this guy for very long. I'll tell you that now. But since he's come on board, it's been, it's been nothing but, but support and goodwill. And I'll never forget it. And I reckon you're, you're one of the best blokes I've ever met, Bobby. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. What's the deal with the cucumber sandwiches, you weirdo? <laughs> Remind me to show him some hail and pace. <laughs> Hello, Dave. I thought you, I thought you were going to miss me out, man. <laughs> no way, What's getting all teary? How could I miss you out? Because if I'm spreading the love around, there's a big fat bouquet of love coming your way, my friend. <laughs> I love Thanks. you. Thanks, I mate. I love you like a brother. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's just a pity you did all your good material on a Lachlan. <laughs> Sausage is my ass. <laughs> Paul Hester. <laughs> Paul Hester, what can I say about you? You are just an inspiration, a joy. When you walk in the room, it lights up. And uh, I just look forward to working with you for a long, 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 long time. Thank you, my friend. Thanks. Well, he's all right, I suppose, but he's no Count Paul Grabowski. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I couldn't end things without saying something a little bit kind about myself, because quite frankly, I don't think I'm doing a too bad a job on this show at all. This really is the worst TV show ever, you fat, greasy-haired, foul-mouthed, uncouth slob. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> Kindness Week's freaking me out! <laughs> Anymore, mate, stop! <laughs> you can't be too kind. You can't be too kind. I've killed myself with kindness. Let's go back to hatred week. I let's like go, that much let's better. Go back, let's go back to good old hatred. <laughs> that always works. Hey, the other huge story of the week, and this is, I mean, you cannot pick up a paper, you cannot watch uh, a TV program without this coming up. Eyes wide shut. Stanley oh, Kubrick. It's oh. everywhere. It is so absolutely lovely. enormous. And I, I've got no problem with that. But you know what annoys me? You know what really irks me? What's what? that? All the publicity has gone to Tom and Nicole. Not, not, virtually not a single mention of my performance. Your I didn't you, even know. It, you were in it. You see, in you didn't show. even know. What? I'm in Eyes Wide Shut. No, no. Are, you, are you in that orgy scene? No, I'm in one of them. Did you have a mask on? <laughs> I, I may have. Uh. I can't give too much away, but you didn't know, did no. you? No. So far, the only person who's bothered to interview me is Mike Munro. Oh. Now, didn't you see? No. Didn't no. see. I was on a current affair last night. Take a look. 
I must say, I did lose count how many times I saw your bottom. Mike! That's so rude! <laughs> Stop talking about my bot bot! <laughs> you didn't have a bottom stand in, did you? Mike, no! <laughs> it's my bot bot! Stop ogling it! Stop it, Mike! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> well, you have all sorts of stand-ins, but I didn't know whether you sort of have bottom stand-ins. You don't. <laughs> no! It's my bot-bot. <laughs> Stop looking at me like I'm an object, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if this show's a little highbrow for some, you can tune out. <laughs> yeah, that's just got me going. <laughs> you know, that's a bit taxing, that little bit there, isn't it? Hey, enough of our hoo-ha. Time for a bit of music, and uh, if you all oh. would, I'm going to implore oh, yeah. you at this particular point yes. to put on your 3D glasses and make very welcome the blokes who put this album together. Don't look at it now. Oh, it's freaking me out! <laughs> we have a, a quick look at that. They're the Phantom Surfers. They're all the way from America. I've said too much. Here they come, Phantom Surfers! <laughs> Welcome back. We're still banging on endlessly about anything. <laughs> oh, really? I think you can take them off now. Sorry, Nick. I was watching the ads. The uh, Red Rooster Parmigiana looks sensational. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Sorry to ruin your fun, but we're back on here. Hey, Jude, what are you bringing to the table? What's on your mind? <clears throat> I've got some shocking news. Hang on a second. This I'm, sounds ominous. I'm afraid it is. I'm glad you're sitting down. I'm glad all of you are, because you're not going to believe this, but during the wake... A couple of people said to me that they liked the show, but they thought it was a bit blokey. Oh. <laughs> oh, Jesus, oh, blokey! Oh, were, they, were they shields that said this to you? Uh, yes! And what was what that in the stone? I, what was I, that with the woman with the enormous tits? Yeah. Yeah. Is that too We do yeah. and we do and we do for the chicks! I said to her, I'm the golden girls blokey, for God's sake! <laughs> And so what I've done is I've cobbled together some highlights from last week's show just to completely disprove this theory. And yeah. by the way, people <laughs> obviously also missed the subliminal feminist message that was in mm. the show last week. So can mm. we have a look at this, please? Yeah. Hello. 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 Scrotum. Dedicated to men everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Direction. <laughs> oh, we missed my little saying huge erection, but look, I rest my case. 
<laughs> you know, and uh. I think the show's gone a bit girly. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's gone a bit soft, hasn't it? Dave O'Neill, if I hear you talking about worms one more time, <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, in an attempt to redress the balance, mm. I'd like to talk a little bit about a book I found during the week that's called Facts and Fallacies. Because mm. I don't think you can know enough about the penis. Mm. And no. uh, do you think people have noticed that? <laughs> this I've sounds like it's going to be offensive. I reckon you should stop it now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nonsense. It's, it's actually just full of really interesting facts. Mm -hmm. They start off with the insect world. Mm. The female praying mantis will bite off the male's head as soon as he mounts her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I know chicks are meant to play hard to get, but that seems, <laughs> seems a little excessive. Sure. He can fulfill his destiny as well as providing his mate with a nutritious protein filled meal. <laughs> no, I'm looking for that in a man. I just want a guy who's got a body, a neck and maybe a bucket of chicken nuggets. <laughs> I look forward to seeing that on What's Cooking. <laughs> Here's something I bet you didn't know. This mm. is all true. Mm. The raccoon's penis bone is long and thin with a hook at the end and has been used as a toothpick. <laughs> now, my question there is, what's wrong with flossing? Yeah, sure. Who woke up one morning and just thought, now I'm going to combat plaque with a raccoon's dick? <laughs> um, here's one for the perverts. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Hang on. We all pricked up then, didn't we? <laughs> Male deer masturbate by rubbing their antlers on a tree. <laughs> now, I once had a delightful experience in a laundromat because generally when men see me, they do have to pop their hands down their pants. <laughs> and, uh, I tell you what, this guy's life would have been made a lot easier that day if he could have just rubbed his mullet, you know, on a pot plant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they keep coming. Uh, <laughs> but you didn't you know this. Antlers on television. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, this time we're, we're in uncharted terrain. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, it's all informative. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Pegawans of South Burma used to insert little gold and silver bells under the skin of the penis, and many a native bird that would have saved. Oh. And also... So, uh, it's, it's festive. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, you, you can have sex with a lovely Christmassy fair. <laughs> this is something for everyone. In Good, ancient so. Rome, entertainers had holes made in the foreskin and a ring inserted to stop them taking advantage of their enraptured female fans. I just read that out for you, Pendo. <laughs> He's had the yeah. same op. Uh, here we go, well. gourmet corner. In Spain, the traditional inspection of the bulls by the matadors is marked by a gathering at which bulls balls are served on dry toast accompanied by dry sherry. That's something we never got round at Nan's, I'll tell you that now. And, oh, here How we go. How would you like your balls done? <laughs> How would you like your bulls balls? Uh, penis sheets. Mm. Are, are a popular form of attire throughout the third world. Yeah. Toothpaste tubes and even the leg of a plastic doll have been spotted for filling this role. So I just want to say, if any of you guys just want to slip your jocks off and pop on a Barbie camper van, don't mind me. I'd rather use a two-litre easy go out there. <laughs> And I reckon Dave, that... don't be boisy. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I reckon this would be a good look. In 14th century Europe, high-ranking noblemen were permitted to display their naked genitals below a short tunic. Their oh. tightly fitting hose were not joined at the crutch. Now, I'm hoping that's a look our current government's going to bring back in. Mm. I'd love to see little Johnny just wearing, you know, a tight T-shirt and some leg warmers. <laughs> and, um, Gorgeous. Uh, this was my favourite one, though. Yeah. According to an ancient Hebrew custom, a man would swear an oath holding in his hand the penis of the man to whom the oath was being sworn. Oh, I've done that on scout camp. <laughs> I'd like to say to Judge Judy. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know how that'd work. You'd be thinking, oh, I'm a bit sus on this guy, but hey, now that he's fondled my balls, I reckon I can really trust him. <laughs> he's in. But now, can I just share one oh, more no thing? Oh, no more penis talk. Oh, no, 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 I mean, we're done already. I tell you, this is something for the ladies, but it okay. is brought to you by a magnificent uh, men's magazine from Britain called Maxim and you know how sometimes you can sometimes let things slide you don't have any clean sure. clothes you've got to go to the laundromat you've got nothing to wear well here's the solution can we get a little ah. close-up of that 
You see, now, what you've got to do is you've just got to fossick around in your stationary drawer and you never know what you could come up with. I, I've gotten out of many a tight spot with just a couple of post-it notes. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, there's... Um, oh, here's another good you shot. Know, it does feel like we should now be cutting the pendo wearing just that. <laughs> <laughs> Or oh, possibly yeah, this. Right. This is just a this is just a shot of me at home watching the telly. <laughs> <laughs> and just finally, because this there was an article in there about an English comic. Have you been reading that magazine? When you <laughs> <laughs> no, Dave, it's all yours. Uh, but um, she's a she's a female stand-up. I'm okay. not making this up. Uh, and she's bloody well gone and stolen my publicity shot. Have a look at this. Uh, you see? Because uh, uh, I quite often get around in just a couple of transparent bits of plastic. See? Now that's funny. <laughs> well, that is funny. And you know, for my next show, I'm just going to be wearing contact and a couple of protractors, I reckon. <laughs> I hope you're not making that up, because otherwise you're just teasing us, Jude. Oh, but I lie to you, Mick I'm going to hold you to that. Well, thanks for that. That was informative and offensive. <laughs> yeah, can, can people ring in for a fact sheet? Oh, for sure. I've got it covered. Thank you, Jude. That was wonderful. Uh, I really I really think that you should hide that magazine because someone from the crew will be rubbing their antlers against the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Tony Sorry. Martin, that's enough out of you. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, is this true? Do you have a new segment on the show? It's a, I'm going to return good taste to the program momentarily, Mick, because good. it's a brand new segment uh, called Celebrity Spy Camera, where uh, Simon Morley, one of the writers from the show, is Cy about. He's over there. Cy and myself uh, have got a new segment where we simply follow a television personality around for a day and secretly film them with a hidden camera. Is that legal? Uh, it's it? not legal at all. Do you, go to the u do you go to urinals, though? Like, penis action? Or? Oh, oh, no. Okay. There's nothing like that, sure. because uh, our first one involves <laughs> Pete Smith. Oh, OK. And he's decided not to press charges. Oh, good. And as you know, Pete Smith, of course, uh, respected voiceover man here at the Nine Network. Mm -hmm. This is Pete's uh, yeah. 35th Absolutely. year Oof. here at the... Let's have a round, I think, yeah. for that. Oh, yeah. I think Pete was here when they... <laughs> Pete was standing in here when they actually turned cameras on in this country. That's right. He was there at the beginning and we followed him round and this is what happened. We're here at Pete's house, Tudor Court, and all is quiet. Hey, guys. Oh, Sheep. my God. He's not fucking about. Oh, here's something. Looking pretty chipper. What's he doing? Come on, Lou. Come on. Jeez. Goodness. Why don't we see any of this on sale? Here he comes. Hey, Tom, is that a gun mobile? Well, that's the dart, side. Sorry. It's the dart. Jeez, how was that? It's a bit ugly, wasn't it? Sure was. Now, we're here at Channel 9 because Pete has apparently got a big meeting. Here we come. Oh, yeah. Get the gate up. Hey, hurry Pete, up. come on, give us one, come mate. Come on, I'm in a hurry. Come on, give us one. Sail of the century. <laughs> What's he doing? He's just sitting in his car. He sort of looks a bit nervous. Yeah. <laughs> what's he? Oh, no. Hang on. Now what's he? <laughs> He's on Channel 1. Cut! Oh, Pete, thanks for coming in. Oh, that's all right, man. Look, what's all this about? <sighs> hey, listen, mate. There is an awful lot of talk around the station at the moment about your... Uh, 
You're increasing eccentric behaviour. Eccentric behaviour? What are you talking about? Oh, how can I tell you? Um, look, who am I? I am a very popular National Nine voiceover man. And I was recently found cowering, <laughs> cowering nude in the old IMT barrel. Stop right there. That's it. You can direct all your questions to my attorney. Yes, Who? I'm French. I'm a bad lawyer. What do you want, French? South Park. Oh, I heard he was a fan. Bombs, beat that bitch, beat that bitch, beat that bitch, beat that bitch, beat that bitch. Bombs, beat that bitch, beat that bitch. What's he up to? What's going on? Hang on. Hang on. What's he doing? Oi! Oh, Smith, not again! Get <laughs> some help, buddy! Oh, yeah. Where is he? I don't know. Is he gone? There he is. What? <laughs> What's he doing now? What's he up to? Oh no. It's in a bit of a hurry. It's a oh. No. Dirty, <laughs> dirty man. It's been in there a while. I got an idea. <laughs> just one day. Next week, I think we're following uh, Dougie, the former pizza boy. Okay. Around. That should be, Ooh, should be yeah, wonderful. Controversial. <laughs> My favourite moment, I think, in the whole thing is when he's coming down the water slide. He still has the presence of mind to adjust that's his boat. Oh, <laughs> that's just wonderful. When, hey, when was the last time you saw Pete Smith in a bong? Oh, about three hours ago, I think, <laughs> in my dressing room. Uh, hello? Where's one of those we've had, Hesse? That's a bad I was wondering when you were going to fire up. Oh. All right, look, we better go to a break. Uh, guess what? When we come back, we've got a very special guest, Glenn Robbins. Don't Ooh. go away. <laughs> Hold long enough at the door, or...? Pete, that was fantastic. Pretty good. Well done. Well done, Pete. Yeah, we might have to go for another one, I think. Oh, Just for our oh, own amusement. <laughs> at the door. Welcome back, and look who's joined us. It's me old buddy, Glenn Robbins. Say hello to Glenn, everybody. Yeah. I'm, doing, I'm doing that American thing. Yeah. Americans always, always clap themselves. Clap themselves. Ooh, yeah. It's <laughs> a good look. They usually stop with everyone else, though, Glenn. Oh, OK. Fine. Okay. Just a little tip. Fantastic. How you been? I'm good. I'm hey, doing the leaning forward thing. We're, I feel we're trying that, yeah. more comfortable. Yeah, it gets a bit much when you're leaning back. Mm. People start to say we're not putting in. Mm. But I no. find just simply by leaning forward, the monkey's off our back. Beautiful <laughs> stuff. Can I just say, two great opening segments. Very funny Thank stuff. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, yeah, well, that's a whole show there. You're that's working, a whole show. We can go now. You've worked very well. Congratulations <laughs> to all of you. And right. um, you can all go home. You can play us out now, Hess. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was, I was just watching something else on the <laughs> you cheeky bastard. I am trying my hardest. You watch this show, you watch this show probably, now. It's probably all a bit new to you, Glenny, live TV. Yeah. <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't uh, have too many flying hours up, would yeah, you, Glenn? Mate. Listen to old funny boy over here. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be in this country, buddy. <laughs> you were the one who falsified yeah, the immigration papers. Absolutely, oh, I got him here. Did you... Don't you go blabbing around too much, I'll fix you up. You didn't do the comedy company live, did you? Uh, no. Okay. Right. 
You want me to do Uncle Arthur, don't you? No, no, no. I was hoping no, you'd no. come dressed as Uncle Arthur yeah. myself, Glenn. Yeah. No can, chance. Can, can you decon the fruit? I like him, he was good. <laughs> do you want to go in or shall yeah, I? Yeah, I think it's best that I go. I've a guest in here. Oh, hey, 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 come here. Give us a come card. On, mate. What's Sorry. news, Glennie boy? What do we need to know? Well, um, hey, what's Kate Lembrook like? <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Am I looking really uh, uneasy here? No, is this, no, is no, no, no. Am I coming over okay? Not yeah, as uneasy well. as I'm looking. Okay, yeah. no, it's all very comfortable. Very it's all very everybody. comfortable. How's things on the panel? Everything going well? No, happy to be there, and, and it's nice to be here. It's an exchange program. <laughs> it you, is, isn't it? You get me, uh. and Channel 10 get Kerry Ann for a week, which will be nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so there you I'm go. sure they're looking forward to that. <laughs> Terrific. I'm sure they're looking forward to that. I can, look, I can't go any further. Uh, mm. I must say something, and. Uh, it's sort of a hard thing to say. Okay. A lot of people said a lot of things about the show. Mm. And uh, you said something a couple of weeks ago that uh, upset me. Did I offend you? Yes. I did, seriously. So oh, I, wow. I probably okay. should say it now. Get to the back of the queue, soldier. <laughs> <laughs> did, did I really? I said something that offended you. Okay. Do, do you want to talk about it? Or? Yeah, okay, no, let's have it out. Um, You're here now. You said some things about some friends of mine. And oh, I, and I thought it be? was uh, human nature. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I recall something. Uh, uh, and I, I thought it was inappropriate. I you think did? we've got some footage of it here, what you actually and said. And for some reason we're plugging AutoLive, where they crash stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of heading down there with 40,000 human nature CDs. <laughs> and just whamming them into the wall! <laughs> oh, come on! Mm. Naturally, okay. I was upset by what you said there. Oh, well, um, I, 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 what can I do but apologise? Uh, I mean, I'm entitled to my opinion as you're entitled to yours. You don't like human nature? Look, I'm not overly fond, no. I, 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 I can't, you know, I don't think I've got any in the old, you know, KTL record selector at home, Glenn. That's what you're uh, for. I was driving home the other night, mm. and uh, as I often do, I went past your place. Okay. I um, happened to have my video camera. Oh, dear. And I got some footage that you might be interested in. human nature. What a hypocrite. Riot! <laughs> 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 oh dear. You know, Glenn, it's easy to take something like that out of context. <laughs> I, think, I think I think pictures uh, say a thousand words, Mick. I'm sorry, but uh, all right. Well, you're done. Are you, are you happy now? Oh, I'm happy because Glenn, I actually you you yourself got into a bit of a controversy recently by comments you made on the panel. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. You were actually. Um, <laughs> let me refresh your memory, mon frere. You were making comments in. A, well, let, let's roll the footage, shall we? Let's okay. just. Have a dating from. It's because oh, that man, looks like a bit of fun. <laughs> No, but I mean, seriously, that wasn't anything beyond putting a bit of oil on them and then being whacked with a rolled up bit of paper in there. <laughs> yeah, no. which, is, which has got a lot to do with being in the Navy. I mean, what are you talking do you, about? Do you really think it was that bad? Mm, very oh. interesting. You know, I looked at that because there was a lot of letters of complaint to, to, to newspapers regarding those comments, and I was wondering why you took that stance. I was wondering why exactly you felt like that. And um, I was driving around to see you the other night, <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> I have a video camera, and well, uh, well, let's take a look at what I shot. Um. Oh. Oh. Glenn Robbins, I knew it! After his old shit. Oh. This. Oh. Oh, you poof! Well, if you want to take things out of context, Mick, um, uh, uh, I, I really, I, uh, look, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Are we done? We're done. Look, look, let's call it square. Let's just forget it ever happened. Just one more thing. One more thing. Um, I don't know whether you've seen the new Human Nature um, clip, but uh, uh, I think people might be interested to see. Yeah. Uh, You're going to show it on the show. Let's just have a look at this. Big round of applause uh, for the... 
<laughs> for the new member of Human Nature, Mick Malloy. Mick, I rest my case. You rest your case. We used the... It's easy to take something like that out of context. <laughs> right? Already, haven't we? Damn. I'd like reckon. to know who the young naked fellow who was in Glenn's flat was. <laughs> and, and so would his yeah. mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was Justin Morley. Oh. Marie, you should be ashamed of yourself. Can I just say, can we, uh, when we shot that, we uh, it was at the front window of a street. A very busy one. A very busy street, and uh, I'm sure the neighbours now are wondering really what's going on because mm. there was a lot of nude work. There was a number of takes. <laughs> and uh, like, anyway, like that's not a regular occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> it was all rather sedate for me, well, wasn't it? Okay. And you know my favourite bit of that whole thing was, was when I'm in the room, I'm dancing to human nature, how brave is this to go, liar, <laughs> and run off? <laughs> and then, right? I'll tell you, but the police turned up about a uh, half minute. The police thought I'm there was sure a... They <laughs> Anyway, it was a lot of fun. Oh, hey, oh, hey yeah. no hard feelings, my friend. Mate, yeah. mate, I'll uh, give you a no. cuddle in a okay, minute. Okay, fantastic. Um, you're probably wondering why we're wearing cravats. Mm. <laughs> I think Bobby could probably explain things from here. Well, it was great to see you guys make up because it's it's that sort of time, <laughs> isn't it? Hess has joined us. He's got the apron on. I don't know where Tony is. Perhaps he'd like to slip in. I know he enjoys a cucumber sandwich. We've Sean? had the crusts cut off. That's always good to see. Help yourself. Mm. Pass them around. We've got the mm. cake there. We've got the scones. And uh, have cream. we gone mad? I don't think we have. We've cravatted up, and that's a nice touch. We've it's spent peanuts too. Complimentary nuts. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> We've spent far too long in the gutter tonight. Let's uh, let's class it up a bit. Class it up. Have you got a sandwich, Bob? Yes. Yeah, oh, there's oh, there's a spare one right there. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thankfully, someone's keeping an eye on such things <laughs> because it's time for. <laughs> 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 yep, it's yes. time to get cracking. <laughs> it's time for How Delightful. Who are you? What's that, Shelly? Sandwich loaf? What's that? It's toast. Let's go. No, look, it was the only bread I had in the house. You should have made a sandwich. It's too early for a sandwich. Let's go! <laughs> How delightful. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's a, it's a long way to go, this segment, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope this isn't toast life. <laughs> Are we done? I can assure you it isn't. <laughs> All right, look, we're going to take a, a very small break. <laughs> break. <laughs> Welcome back. Only one cucumber sandwich left, Bob. Fight you for it. Thank you so much, Mick. Oh, it was the end of that exchange, wasn't it? I was prepared to share. I think we you... all know who this belongs to. <laughs> all right. Yeah, never cross him when it comes to cucumber sandwiches. That's what I've learned. Hey, Glenn, I... you're a bit of... you, you like stick films. Oh, um... take it easy. <laughs> Whoa, 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 look, I laid my ass on the line before, literally. I'm not going to say, I'll, I'll, I'll call it straight. I love stick films. So I was looking for a segue into the next bit. No, but I know we've, we've watched a couple together. Yeah. And did you see, did you, did you see that cucumber sandwich? On? <laughs> Bring back the cravat. Did you see that free titles opener? That was a Caltex yeah. ad from, I don't know what era, but we were... 
We were mucking around with it because it just we've been laughing at it all week and we thought it would be great because the dialogue is actually like porno dialogue. So we've got Gareth who does some of the music on the show to actually do a bit of a like a porno soundtrack for us and put it under. Have a listen. Just just check this out. It works out. Right. Being a Caltech service station operator, the nicest things happen to you. I was giving the usual Caltech service to my customers the other day. But the Caltech service? I recognised her at once. She recognised me too. And asked me were the Marfac TV demonstrations I do real. <laughs> I straight away invited her in the office so she could actually watch my things. <laughs> Not an aficionado of the dog. Exactly, I was just heating this fry. I feel like I've still got my 3D glasses on. <laughs> then you can do a test for us yourself and prove beyond any doubt that Marfac, under extreme heat conditions, will stand up to it much better than any other grease. My, this five pan really is hot. That's the line. <laughs> and it turned right up. Mm, my goodness. Really? All right, enough of that. that Everyone's nice. getting horny. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the music from a Saturday afternoon documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Documentaries, that's one thing you could call them. You've been watching too much Nature Channel on, uh, on Foxtel, I think, Glenn. Hey, is it time for a segment? Would you guys be in a segment? Yeah, Do you sure. like leave me high and dry if I bust open yeah, bombshells? Yeah. Bombshells? Well, I reckon it's time to play bombshells. We did this, uh, oh, it'll be two or three shows ago now. Yeah, I thought, did we? I'm <laughs> pretty sure. I'm I thought, I thought it went rather well myself, so let's get into it. And if you like, I'll kick off. Uh, hey, well, how does it work first? Ah, uh, well, I think uh, they, upstairs they put up the graphic bombshells. Right. And then when we release a bomb... There it is! Hello! Oh, yeah. Someone's <laughs> listening. And, uh... <laughs> To say something that you say it, something yeah. and then duck for cover because okay. a bombshell yep. comes raining down. Yep. Weren't you at rehearsals, Glenn? <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> it's quite all right. I have a feeling this is rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> this is going out. Oh, who cares? <laughs> hey, he's, he's, I've got one. I've I got single one. Glenow, none of us were there. <laughs> I know. It was just me on my own. <laughs> so how does it work, Mick? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more. Someone, you just have to drop something that could be classed as a bombshell. I, I reckon. No, all right, you go first. Well, I'm going to go first, and here's something I've been keeping from you guys, because I know you're going to you'll laugh at me, but mm. here's something I'm thinking of doing. I am thinking of getting a nipple ring. <laughs> Hence the bombshell. Um, what? What do you reckon? Is that too much? Is it for the look? Is it handy when you, you know, you want to, what do you want to do with it? Well, I'm thinking of, of just getting one, the left one, and putting my spare house key on it. <laughs> Because when you come home pissed, you know what I mean? You can have one your key. It's a perfect kite. It's just... <laughs> Don't you reckon I am? And it's fashionable. And it's fashionable. Oh, that's a bombshell. It's a bombshell. Have you got one, Tone? Well, I've got a, a bombshell. Years and years ago, anonymously, this is true, I recorded the voiceover for a late night TV commercial for a Persian rug warehouse that was going out of business. <laughs> <laughs> dangerous segment. No, I just didn't. I just didn't. I just didn't want to go to the grave never having done one. You know? Have you seen those ads? It's, for a sh it's a Persian rug warehouse, and the bank's called up, and they're going out of business. Everything has to go. Mm. Then about a week later, they're overstocked. <laughs> and then a week later, the bank's back on the phone. They're out of business uh, again. Uh. And then a week later, the same bloke is at the same shop, but it's got a slightly different name. Persian Rug and Warehouse are in a different combination, and they're opening again. <laughs> it's and they're overstocked again. It's a boom-bust cycle with those Persian <laughs> Rug Warehouses. You've got to be in it. You've got to do one. It is indeed. Well, that, that's uh, more than informative. Gee. Bob? Got a bombshell? Yes, I have, Nicky. Um, <laughs> earlier in the week, I had some bulls balls on toast. <laughs> yes. But it wasn't dry toast. I had some butter on my toast. <laughs> yeah, um, no one could have predicted that. <laughs> Least of all me. <laughs> Least of all you. <laughs> Glenn. So I'm last. It better be good, isn't oh, it? Really? No, I'm, I'm not finishing yet. No, there's a few more to go. Oh, OK. Mm. Um, when I was a kid, this is true, um, I, had a, um, I had a Ken doll. <laughs> you know, 
you know, there was Barbie. Yes. And there was Ken. Well, I wanted a G.I. Joe, yeah. and they'd run out of G.I. Joes. <laughs> so I got a Ken doll, and, like, G.I. Joe could do all this, you know, yeah. you know, and punch him. Uh. All Ken could do was have straight arms and straight legs, and he, but his head could spin around. So um, <laughs> that was a pretty good consolation. But did, did, did you put Ken in army greens? No. Because G.I. Joe at least had army greens. Ken's a big poof. <laughs> no, no, that's what I'm saying. I mean, how embarrassing it was to go out and play with Ken out the front, you know. Oh, but we blew him up with crackers, so that made it. <laughs> yeah. That's taken the edge off it somewhat. Yes, I feel okay now. Can we fly over to the couch there, Patchy? Uh, do you have a bombshell? I certainly do, Mick. I've got an Olympic scoop. Okay. Australia's premier rowing quartet have had their circumcisions reversed and are going to row in the 2000 Olympics as the awesome foreskins. <laughs> That has been another patchy special. <laughs> Delivered with a plum on the couch over there. Is that next to you, G? Do you have a bombshell? Yes, I do, Mick. Mm. I'm a man. <laughs> That's a big one. I'm going to keep on <laughs> We should be running across from one side to the other in the room like we've just taken it. She's going to blow! Can you prove that, Judith? Oh, later. <laughs> okay. I've got a bombshell from the news this week. Mm -hmm. The RAF, in fact, involving the topic of bombing, so it just makes it appropriate. Mm. Uh, the RAF have released a study that proves that uh, during the uh, recent war in, in Kosovo, you might not... Do you remember the Kosovo? It was on opposite Wimbledon, so That's probably true. not a lot of people saw it. But uh, apparently, uh, virtually none of the bombs actually hit any of the Serb forces whatsoever. Virtually, like, not one. Oh. So what they need to do next time is uh, trick all the Serb forces to hide inside the Chinese embassy. <laughs> and did you see they've, they've, uh, they've revealed what caused the Chinese embassy to be bombed? Mm. And it's, this is true, okay. officially the excuse for the Chinese embassy being bombed was, quote, old maps. <laughs> old maps. So they're, they're flying around in, they've, they've got a $750 million stealth bomber with last year's street directory in the little house <laughs> inside the door, apparently. Could happen to anyone. Hansi, you got a bombshell. That's a true story. Um, Lee Matthews, mm. at my 21st birthday party, yes. threw out, by the scruff of the neck, um, a drunken Nick Cave. <laughs> Matthews, who coaches lethal? the, Bri the lethal, Brisbane Lions, yeah. Lethal Lee, through Nick Cave, off his porch like a dwarf? Is off, that what you're telling Out of my 21st birthday party, oh. while my grandmother tried to pass out a cheesecake to several people who'd passed out on heroin. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it rings uh, true. <laughs> uh, I think... <laughs> I think it was because Nick wasn't putting in on the track. Nick, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've, I've got another bombshell here. Uh, John Howard, our PM, likes a drink. Oh. Mayday, mayday! Do you, do you don't believe me? Have a look at this. Certainly. Got me at a disadvantage. I've had a drink. See, I didn't know I was going to do this. So, so I, <laughs> no, if you ask the question, I got to think of the answers. Right, I go away. I mean, I mean, start up. <laughs> he's lost it. He's, he's been, he spent all afternoon on the pims. <laughs> so I reckon. Was go away meant to be away you go? Yes, yeah. it says go away. I mean, no. Away you go. He was I mean, you ask the questions and I answer them. Oh, there's a bombshell. <laughs> Hey, I've got one more bombshell. Yeah. Uh, this segment is woefully out of time. <laughs> I asked for real bricks. <laughs> These are foam. <laughs> Look at that. That's not fooling anyone. That was we... actually the one real one. That <laughs> 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 Sorry, Bob. We'll get over that. Look, I think we're done. Did, did the giant pea not fall? <laughs> <laughs> it's up there somewhere. Poke it with a stick. It'll come. I want a bigger pea, Tony. <laughs> did you, you know, I want a pea that's the size of the one... You know the ball from Raiders of the Lost Ark? <laughs> I want to be chased out of the studio by a giant... You think I'm mad. You're looking at me like a man. <laughs> you? you know what you got involved in. All right. I'll get back to the giant pea. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not done yet. Hesse. 
Can you and the boys get us out of here with something appropriate? I do have a song dedicated to women everywhere. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it's called We Should Have Been Doing This A Long Time Ago. Fantastic. Two, three, four. Checked his family records, three of his ancestors were killed with a silver bullet. Makes you think, don't it? Oh, drink up, boys, we're on.
when we were filming that, yeah. when we were filming that, Bobby's gone, drink up boys, we're on, and I thought we were about to cut to Clockwork Orange. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're about to kick someone to death to singing in the rain, Bobby. But that wasn't us. That wasn't us. That makes it even more intriguing. <laughs> Here you go. What's going on? Look, I've got to ask you, what's, what's happening with this republic? Has there been any news uh, today? They're still trying to frame the question, I think. Mm. Yeah, which, is, which model are they using? I'm not sure. Are they what? using the one... What was that thing they had in Canberra? Last year, what was that called? Uh, Steve Vizard's book launch. I just thought, <laughs> a constitutional convention. Oh, the convention. You know the and one. Peter Reef has come out against it now, has he? Yes, I yes. believe so. And I was reading it, and Reefy saying he doesn't like it because it could result in the head of state being sacked for no reason. Mm. And I thought, there's a first, Peter Reith coming out against something where somebody <laughs> might be sacked for no reason. Is his whole career based on ensuring that people can be sacked for no I reason? I don't think so. Or is that just me? No, no, I think you speak for all of us. Let's get the giant P in here. Where is the giant P? <laughs> I demand some P action before the show's out. Hope somebody... Is the giant P travelling? Hopefully. He's, <laughs> he's rolling along. They've you? sent your mum to go and pick it up. Uh, she'll make, she'll make me eat it. <laughs> Imagine vomiting giant peas. All right, that's oh, enough well, now. Uh, We've gone too far. Put the talkback numbers up. <laughs> Dave, what's happening? Well, Mick, I've been reading Women's Weekly, yeah. as I want. And uh, mm -hmm. in fact, I've noticed it only comes out once a month. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's see. Anyway, that's all from hey, me. Thanks for bombshells. <laughs> bombshells is over. <laughs> Woman's Day comes out once a week. All right, thanks. <laughs> anyway, uh, a new weekly comes out every week. Oh, okay. Oh, phew, I'm working hard now. Um, <laughs> what? No, no, look, there's an What's article on John Laws at home, basically, and it's, I am a bit of a cat lover, and there's this great photo of John Laws and his cat. We've actually got a bit of a still of that. If we just have a look at this, John Laws and his cat. Oh, look God. at it. Oh. <laughs> I love that photo, but... Um, Seconds before it's death. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think though John My God. I think John Lord is loving his cat for the wrong reasons because I got a later photo yeah. and uh, check this out. There we go. Oh, <laughs> I got a second. It's going on, it's going upstairs. <laughs> That's a transplant action. But I thought if this is good enough for uh, John Laws, good enough for me, so I got I got my photographer around, took a photo of me and my cat, so let's have a look at that. Send it to Woman's Weekly. There we go. <laughs> You look really comfortable there, Dave. What's it weigh, Dave? <laughs> it's not a cat, it's just a pig with fur, actually. But, uh... have you, that's great. Have you got any more shots of you with your oh, cat? Oh, okay. There Come are on. a couple more. Come on. All right, lots of me and my cat. There we go. That's, a, that's uh, very artistic, that one. It's uh... avant garde, I think, is the word you're looking for, Dave. <laughs> Look, basically, when I eat, my cat eats. That's what, that's what the policy is. But I, I, wonder, I wonder what John Laws really treats his cat like. Imagine, imagine if we had a hidden camera in his lounge room. Imagine that. <laughs> what that would be Look like. Look you, you lay about. You are scum. You are un-Australian. You are... Wait a moment. What's this? Why, thank you. You know, you are the best cat in the world. <laughs> and cats to anyone. They're fluffy, they're clean. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't shit in my slippers. <laughs> oh, there you go. John Laws. Frankly, though, Mick, it makes me sick all these people being paid, uh, professional TV people being paid, radio people being paid to advertise things. I'm sick of it. I'd like to change the subject totally. You would? I, d I wouldn't mind showing you my snaps of my uh, last holiday. I went, I went to you Europe. Did, you did go to Europe. I went to yes. Europe and Asia, so I wouldn't mind having, having a look at that. Okay, let's just go. Here's me in uh, Berlin. Uh, okay, that's good. Here's me in uh, Prague. Beautiful. There's me in Copenhagen. Uh, that's me in uh, Tokyo. Uh, that's me in uh, Frankfurt. And that's me in uh, London. And there we are back home in Australia. I've got to say, I uh, really enjoy a good McDonald's burger. Now, I've just got to say, uh, I'm, I'm really happy in that last shot because uh, the thumbs up, because I actually won a four-wheel drive on the scratch and win. Yes. And uh, I'm going to claim that prize tomorrow, so I hope there's no problems. <laughs> I'm sure there won't I'm be. I hope there won't be. I'm sure you've taken care of that. Oh, the Big Mac's sweating. <laughs> As is its one. Yes. Hey, look out. Guess who's joined us? Bobby Franklin has. <laughs> Hang on, Bob. Can we do the How Delightful with this? <laughs> there we go. Give it a go, Bob. There you go, Bob. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm 
a lot better than I thought it would be. <laughs> And I think we've just confirmed Bob has had a couple of drinks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the way I go. Bob Franklin has joined us, and I, Bob, I, I can't help but noticing that the, the, well, the gnomes are back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Once more, recreating a famous moment in history. <laughs> yeah. And what is it this week, Bob? Hey, Mick, why don't you take a guess, mate? Hmm. <laughs> well, I'd have to say that it's the storming of the Bastille. During the French Revolution? <laughs> <laughs> was it Robespierre on the end who gave it away? Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Just hanging back from the mob. Wise man. Well done, Mickey. Another feather in your cap, my friend. Mm. Although I, uh, I must say, I almost said that it was... Uh, the setting up of the Paris Commune. <laughs> <laughs> no, a common mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it time now, Bob, for a monster, which I'm sure would have made sense if you delivered the line, <laughs> of, of a different kind? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hang on a second. Bob Franklin's joined us. <laughs> I see that the names are back. I see that the names are back. <laughs> Take over, <Sorry. laughs> It's time for the monster that is live television. Great. And <laughs> <laughs> it's time also to stare in to the belly of the monster that we call the big city. <laughs> it's time to open Bob's grand. Oh. <laughs> Need any help, sir? Um, yeah, actually, I was just wondering, you wouldn't know that uh, dance move that Kevin Bacon used to do in Footloose by any chance, would you? Yeah, that was uh, that was like this. Uh, six, seven, eight. Mm, yeah. Uh, the clicks. Yeah, the clicks. Bump. Toe. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toe. Yeah, you yeah, got it. Tick. Yeah. Uh, toe. Then yeah. there was a variation. Yeah. Go. In. Yeah. Uh, uh, out first. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. That's it. Thank yeah. you very much. My pleasure. Beautiful. You're welcome. Oh. Somebody's going to have a lovely breakfast. Oh! <laughs> I thought we might have lunch at the yacht club. <gasps> could we? I don't see why not. Mm. Perhaps this chap could take a photo for us. Excuse me. Could you take a photo? Oh, yeah? Great. Mm. That's nice. Careful with that. It's a pretty expensive piece of equipment. Right. Uh, all right. You, you want to just uh, take a step back? Just move back a little bit more? Oh, that's great. That's great. That gives me a really good head start with the camera. <laughs> that's the holiday ruined, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, dear. Bob, you're going to have that book down the back of your pants when this segment's over. <laughs> We're going to have a quick break and be back with more in just a minute. Nice one, Bobby. Patchy's on the couch. How are you, Patchy? Mighty fine, thanks, Mick. Mighty fine. That's the way. What's happening in the world of entertainment that we need to know about? Well, look, we're pushed for time tonight, so I'll keep it short, sharp and sweet. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, Sylvester Stallone has committed to the making of Rocky VI. <laughs> now, he's, he's, oh, he's, now, he's going to do it Rocky I style, where he actually kind of writes, produces and directs. Mm -hmm. Hands on again for Sylvester. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, in America this week, Life is Beautiful, the dubbed in English version has been released. Dubbed in English? Yes. Right, is he happy about that? Roberto Benigni. Yeah. He's more than happy. Okay. And if that's a success, they're going to uh, try the same thing with John claude Van Damme's new film, Universal Soldier 2, The Return. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I look forward to seeing that. Mm. Nice work. And finally, uh, Robert Downey Jr., as you would have... Is that a jar? No, he's back in. Oh, he's back in? Three years are the best this time. <laughs> it's a revolving door for him, isn't it? I'm sure when he leaves his cell, they don't pack anything away. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's never long. Hey, what's exactly. he back in for this time? Uh, Same deal? Repeatedly The last violating three films, his... I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Definitely. Uh, Dave and I have been to the pictures again this week. What did you see this week, boys? Hey, hey, hey. We went separately this time. <laughs> <laughs> there's you... been some talk. There's been some tension. You... I was waiting, Patchy. What Happen. Well, I was in Cinema 5 and you were in Cinema 6. I oh. After the show, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in those multiple places, Go on. Yes. What did you see? We saw our uh, two hands. Okay. Now, I've heard this is, is... Is this the best Australian film of the year? Well, That's what they're saying. It hasn't been a great year for, an Australian, for Australian films in general. Probably before Two Hands Praise was the yardstick. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, this has it. It rocks. So you reckon it's cool? Mm -hmm. You reckon it's a winner? It's a good film. Dave. Dave? Well, I firstly, you want to talk about the lollies at the cinema, right? <laughs> I went to Hoyt's this time. The lollies, the Allen's ones, they're fantastic. Village, get your act together. Your lollies are shit house, all right? <laughs> they are so bad. They are cheap and nasty. The 17 year old Usher is being sent down to the reject shop for sure. <laughs> no, the lollies are shocking. The, fil the film was great. The yeah. film uh -huh. was great. <laughs> Brian Brown, great to see him out of the cocktail so, era. And, uh, he's hilarious. He's back on deck. And he's, he's in good form. Everyone uh, speaks highly of him. His performance. Yeah, he's right. fantastic, and one of the Heartbreak High kids gets killed in the movie, so uh, it's good. I hope you haven't happy. given anything away there, oh, sorry about that. It's a small role, isn't it? And right. the use of music, use of Australian music, is excellent. Powderfinger, that song, mm -hmm. is fantastic in Definitely. American. Yeah. And Brian yeah. Brown plays a character in the film, a uh, King's Cross crime boss called Pando. Pando? Which is, uh, Not to be confused with Pando. Mm. Exactly, I just wanted to make that very clear. But uh, the vision we're going to show from the film tonight uh, involves... Well, it will probably appeal to anyone whose mobile phone batteries have ever run out at a crucial moment. Let's take a look at this. There you go. Uh, see that beep? It's actually called waiting. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. He doesn't know how to work his phone, that guy. Star 43 hash, they say. Mm. Oh, right. <laughs> now, we've got to get a rating system for you guys. Yeah. So, what are you giving it? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Are you saying that's a good one? Well, David, obviously, give it three fresh lollies out of four. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. That's if you, were, if you went to Hoyts and not Village. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, All but right. I, I'll give it like three to four stars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, same here. Good Definitely. start. Now, uh, just uh, changing the uh, tone of the segment ever so slightly, a lot of people who've seen kind of Boogie Nights and The People vs Larry Flint could be forgiven for thinking that, you know, your garden variety pornographer is probably cute and cuddly as a koala. Mm -hmm. But I've brought in some documentary evidence tonight that this isn't the case. Okay. There's still at least one filth monger out there, and his name is Al Goldstein, who's giving the bottom <laughs> of the barrel a good hard scraping. Now, if we just go to the vision that we have right here. Television City. In New York, Al Goldstein presents Midnight Blue. Now, every uh, Saturday night in New York from about 2 in the morning till 6 in the morning, the witching hour for pornographers, Al kind of gets up to uh, all kinds of tricks. He's the publisher of Screw Magazine, okay. which is uh, read by... Uh... Oh, I thought he did felch. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Al keeps the news, Al. Very salubrious company. But he's not afraid to speak his mind either. We're about to see a bit where he takes on Pat Buchanan, who's a leading member of the moral right in America. But he's also not a man to let hey, a business opportunity cool like get Al away. Goldstein? Well, you don't have to dress like him. Have your own TV show or eat as much as he does. No, just get your own laser pointer with six interchangeable triple X message tops, just like Al Goldstein. It's a tremendous item. I have it exclusively. It's only $29.95 for one, or $49.95 for two. Order now and be the life of the party, just like Al Goldstein. With this pointer with six different lucky messages, just call 1-800-347-7688 to order. He's a class mm. actor. Uh, He's Al Goldstein. Mm, that number works in Australia too, I should add. Okay. <laughs> vision accomplished. But uh, the next bit of vision that I want to show uh, regarding Al Goldstein is just a fantastic opportunity for anyone who's ever wanted to make their own porn film. And uh, if anyone can tell me what the machine is that's uh, in the, kind of the rear of this footage, please let us know. Let's take a look at this. For 30 years, I've been a world-class eroticist. Screw Magazine, Midnight Blue. And so for $25,000, with your lawyers and my lawyers, I guarantee completion of an X-rated film. I will be the producer. Ron Jeremy will be the director and also be in the film. It'll be a full-length 
X-rated film shot in video. That's what they all do. It will have five or six, five or six sex scenes. A custom-made script will be written for you. You will be invited to see the film being shot. You will not be allowed to participate unless you take an AIDS test. But you don't have to be on camera. You can be there as the big shot financer or financing this film. This is real. This is not bullshit. You do this because it's fun and exciting. You take cruises. You have adventures. You visit Alaska. Any guy out there, woman too, if that's your uh, inclination, this is your opportunity. And I, I'm serious. This is the world of pornography. This is real. Uh, a, a true great opportunity. If you're interested, we'll give you some phone numbers. The first film we did was tremendous. It's a real success, and it was so much fun that it's now a business. We'll be doing this. We hope to make 10 to 30 films a year. It's your opportunity. What a gift you give somebody. <laughs> I mean, you could buy something in some museum or, or, or the botanical garden. This is something you will own and have. You don't even have to sell the film if you don't want to. It's your movie. And I will make sure it's put together and is professional. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I love the way the botanical gardens got roped yeah. into Al Goldstein's world of erotica. <laughs> and you get to go to Alaska. So you get yeah. to go to Alaska. Stop your whinging, everybody. Now, Mick, I have another bombshell. On his deathbed, Stanley Kubrick was watching Midnight Blue <laughs> oh, and, yes. uh, and dialed that number that we just saw on the screen. Mm. And as a result, Al Goldstein cut one of the final trailers for a Stanley Kubrick film, and it was for Eyes Wide Shut. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> It looks professional. You can come and be a big shot if you want. <laughs> Go on, uh, Tom, we're off to Alaska. Hey, I've got a bit of a film exclusive, if you don't mind me cutting in, Patchy. Oh, Dave. Please. Sure. Uh, there's been a lot of talk uh, here in Australia about the Chopper Reed movie, which is currently being filmed. Mm. And But if you notice, there's been no articles about it in the That's paper. True. That's and true. no one is, I think, even officially allowed to say who's playing Chopper mm. in the film. So a lot of people are wondering. We've got uh, a bit of a preview of a scene oh, from really? the film. Do you want to have a look at that? Oh, now? yes, please. Let's have a look at that. Exciting. What? 20 grand? 20 grand? Just chop a note? Oh, thank Christ. If he finds out about this, I, I, I'm, I'm f Oh, shit. Sorry, I've got to go. Reg? Mate, what the f are you doing? Shh. Chopper, he's in here. Chopper? Oh, shit. Yes, sir. Uh... Sadly, it is me. Sorry. Sorry to come barging in on such a lovely and delightful afternoon, but uh, I'm afraid there is the, the small and somewhat unavoidable business of $20,000. <laughs> so, um, obviously, uh, we can do this the easy way, or uh, sadly, there are a number of fairly hideous uh, alternatives. I don't know anything about the 20 grand. Ah. Right. Uh, gosh, well, that does um, sadly present something of a problem, a bit of a bugger there, because I am a, uh, a psychopathic mother f and uh, I am going to have to create something of a frightful hoo-ha. Please, Tom, no! So, um, so obviously, I'll just take that, Reg, thank you very much. Uh, we could begin by just, well, chopping your toes off, but uh, quite frankly, I think we've probably all seen a bit too much of that lately, don't you? Yes. Um, Acid bath? Acid bath. That's yes, not a bad suggestion. Uh, chanting suggestion, in fact, from you, Reg. Uh, lovely. But, you know, it does tend to be a tad messy, and I always end up feeling a bit queasy afterwards. Please, just, just let me go. Um, no, 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 I'm afraid that won't be possible. Uh, Snake, is it? Yes, delighted to meet you. Uh, that would be very poor form on my part. Um, you, you just stay put, and we'll have you killed and this sorted out in just a jiffy. Oh. Try this. Well, just, just blow his head off with this rather lovely shotgun. Please, I, I don't have the 20 grand. Mac has got it. Oh, Macca. Now I'm going to have to blow you away. No, no, I am. Awfully sorry about that, Macca. A uh, beastly thing to do to a chap, I know, but, uh, well, I am Chopper Reed. What about Reg? He's in on it. Oh, Reg. If he's telling the truth, this will be ruddy and convenient. He organised the whole thing. No. Golly. Well, this is a bally nuisance, but... Chopper, you've got to let me go. Uh, no, no, I'm afraid I, I, I can't do that, Snake. Uh, I mean, you've been wonderful help, absolutely delightful in a truly appalling situation. But uh, in the words of Echo and the Bunnyman, 
Uh, it is killing time. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, that's an awful, terrible thing to say. Um, look, the fact is I can't really afford to have any witnesses and I am assured by the most reliable sources that you are in fact a, uh, well, a complete mongrel. So, um, toodle pip. Bugger. Can't remember who's got the car keys. <laughs> Chilling. Did, um, did you create, say, Toodle Pip? I think you might have. <laughs> I think he did. Is it uh, a bit early for that? No, I think it's Sorry. Right. We, we're going to get in trouble for Toodle Pip. <laughs> How are you looking, boys? Are we ready to go again over there? You reckon you got one oh, more in you, fellas? Yes, sir. Reckon we can crank it up here with the, uh, with the Phantom Surface. There's a CD. Get it. I'll give you their tour dates later. Boys, crank it up and let's go nuts, it's the Fan Surfers! <laughs> Joey for you Put your hand in my pouch Love I'll jump all over you Sorry What's that?
Was that the whammy? Uh, I'm guessing you've received another tape from Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, the fine work of Lisa Foodie. They're out there, aren't they? Those but you know what? We have, we have more complaints and more uh, letters of congratulations regarding that segment than any other segment on the show. No, you've got to get rid of that and get a wheel in. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Congratulations, you have the job. You're a new executive. <laughs> hey, uh, Pendo's joined us. That Nikki, means it must be time to talk sport. How are you, Pendo? Good morning, yourself. Oh, yeah, not too bad, bro. Right? What's happening? Good morning, how are we? Oh. Oh. Just at this first point, Demi, we should thank Richmond Football Club for very kindly giving us some stuff to give away to the Japanese last week. Oh, that's right. So thanks to uh, Tony to Jewell that. and uh, Richmond Footy Indeed. Club. Big week in sport. Indeed. Golf. Yeah. Carrie Webbs uh, won a big tournament. First major. First, first major. major. Yeah, Congratulations. She's been, been in top four out of the 18 events this year. She's finished uh, 17, 17 times in the top 10 mm -hmm. and set the record for the most prize money in a, in a season as well. So she's had a big week. But one of the big stories of the week uh, was uh, the CBS charity classic early on the week in uh, Rhode Island. Yes. This Oof. was huge. Was yeah. You don't see this every day. No, we don't, you don't see this every day. We're going to take look, two players, consecutive hole in ones, same hole, 132 yard par three. Really? Amazing stuff. Two time US Open champion Lee Jansen with his tee shot on the 17th. Three bounces later, it was in the hole and the car was his. Scott McCarron, playing immediately after Jansen, told him to take his ball out of the cup to make room for his. Surely a joke. But not according to McCarron. He said he had a wild feeling he'd make it too, and he did for a one in a million play of the day. That is unbelievable. I, you don't see that. You don't see that? That's exactly how I won my Sigma. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really, Bob? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> Pendo, did you, was there some footage recently, I think it was on the panel actually, of a blind guy hitting a. Yes, hole in correct. Did that really sir, happen? Correct. And uh, Mick, I think. Uh, did I, hear oh, a I rumor? don't like to. I don't like to, to to blow off about it, but it is quite an amazing experience to to bag a hole in one. But when the blind guy got it, wouldn't the temptation have been for everyone to just go shh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep this to ourselves. <laughs> None the wiser, you reckon, Tony? No, no, None no, the wiser. I... But Mick, Mick actually had a hole in one. He's I kept, don't like talking about it. He's kept it quiet, everyone. I did. I well. I did. It's, it's quite a rare experience, and it's just one of those things. It's you get a certain. I'll oh, bugger it. Can well, I show everyone? Go, yeah, got to show. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. Right. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't happen every day, but you know. A couple of other big stories. The gridiron's on tomorrow in Sydney, so mm -hmm. it's on telly on Channel 9 tomorrow. So oh, okay, uh, take right. a look at that. The San These Diego are the two Chargers. teams who uh, we brought out to Australia and they've done nothing but bag us since they got here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard about that? Yeah. They've all been hauling up. Oh, it's a shit house country and you're all shit house. Your food is shit house and just can I repeat shit house? <laughs> <laughs> they did, didn't they? They come out here, it's, got, it's five million bucks worth or something. They're, they're coming yeah. out here and it's. Oh, it's Channel 9, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's a great gig. It's a big Thank event. I, I, it beautiful, I Mick. think if you don't go, you're a clown. Nobody <laughs> said shit out at any point. No, it was never. <laughs> In fact, kick my ass. No, it's shit out. They stand out here and said our country shit out, we're shit out, and they can't wait to go home. Can't wait to go That's home. pretty much how they put it. Now, I've got one for Hesse here, Mick. Mm. Early on in the uh, couple, of, couple of weeks ago, we caught up with basketball. Hesse, you're a big fan, aren't you? Yes, I'm a big fan. A bit of a strategist, not many people know. I've had a bit of work to do with Gazy's career. I heard that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> What's happening, Pendo? Well, we, we, spoke with, uh, we spoke with two of Australia's biggest NBA stars, Luke Longley and Chris Anstey, a few weeks ago, Bob. Big men. Uh, amazing big, lifestyle. They get paid man. a lot of money. And it's one of the last Wake chance. up, Bob. Come on, Bob, with it. I mean, Tony's sitting in on my sports segment. He doesn't know nothing about sport. And he's contributed more than you. Yes. But I haven't understood a single word. <laughs> but we'll have a look at what uh, Luke and uh, Chris Ansey had yes, to say. Yes, more of the basketball, please. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Tremendous. But, but, uh, but listen, they're not going to be back in the country until uh, just before the Olympics next year. It's the last chance to have a chat to a mix. So let's have a look at the footage. Two great and guys. Luke Longley Here we go. The Chicago Bulls for their fourth NBA title in six years. 
Yeah. And when, when you got drafted, number seven in 91 at the Timberwolves. You're doing your uh, homework. Oh, yeah. yeah. After the uh, after college and that, did you ever think maybe, you know, six, seven years down the track you'd be part of probably one going to be the greatest team ever? No, it hit me, it blindsided me for sure. I, I landed on my feet. I knew I was going to be traded. I hoped I was going to be traded. I didn't enjoy Minnesota. And uh, when I got traded to Chicago, Michael wasn't there and looked like a team that was on the downswing yep. in the rebuilding phase. And then, you know, Lightning struck. Michael yeah, came back, and uh, we all had to make adjustments. And in the end, we, uh, you know, he makes the game easier. He's so good that he's very easy to play with, and and that was fun. Yeah, you've had a few changes in your life the last 12 months going to Phoenix. And how have you adjusted with that? Adjusted very well. Um, the family took to Phoenix like fish to water. You know, I think uh, just the fact they could go out of the house was a big deal. And you know, in in, in uh, Chicago, it was just too cold, and the kids climbed the walls, and so did we. Uh, in Phoenix, you know, we can we can live like normal. Um, humans and uh, and we dig it. Yeah. Missed steal by Austin, and that's Anstey the dunk as it was served up by Bubba Wells. Well, it was definitely a big adjustment straight off, and definitely going back the second year was a lot easier. But uh, yeah, the longer you're in a place, the more people you get to know and you become friendly with. So I expect it to be even easier again going back this time, and uh, you yeah, know, hopefully I can settle down there and remain settled for a few years to come. You guys are just on, on the bus, on the road the whole time. If you're not playing group of home matches, it's on the go the whole time. It is. There's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of downtime, but you know, the travel is made very easy. The, the team has their own plane and the bus picks us up straight from the airport. It's, you know, we don't travel commercially at all, so oh, really? that does make it a lot easier. Um, yeah, so you can lounge, you guys can lounge out long, long Yeah, speed. exactly. Is there beds in the plane? Nah, no, no beds in ours. There are some, though. Uh, but we are getting a new plane this year, so it will be interesting to see what that's all about. Yep. And great upon the green and gold again. It's been a few years. It's been seven years, and uh, you know it's what I grew up doing. And it's been a long time between drinks, as far as that goes. And it's been nice just to get it back amongst the lads and, and be involved again. Yep. I've got a few trips planned. I spent a bit of time in the bush, a bit of time with my family, and uh, you know, the just... dockers in the ruck. Well, I go watch the Dockers a lot. I don't know if yeah. the sons would be too happy about me doing any rucking. I'm about to go meet a ruckman, actually. Jeff White's in here. He used to play for the Dockers. I'm going to have to go belt him. <laughs> One of the things Mick asked me to ask, have you seen J.R. Ewing around Dallas? <laughs> no, I haven't been, no, I haven't actually. No? <laughs> Not at all. No, no J.R. Ewing. No. Well, Chris, it's been great having Chris with us. Sensational. But, uh, look at how big he is, too. <laughs> how tall are you? Seven feet. All right. Two of two, my two. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What's, going on here? What's happening with Bob? Mick? I have no idea. Bob's in his own little fantasy land tonight. <laughs> I reckon that was just a couple of normal blokes, and Pendo was just on his knees. <laughs> <laughs> Spot on, Bobby. Yeah, we're too. Well, but you may, well, you may ask what Bob's doing in this gear, Mick. I'd love to be surrounded <laughs> by a couple of normal blokes right now, Bob. <laughs> what the hell's going on over here? Well, this, this is all in preparation, Mick. I don't know if you know this, but you're sending myself. Oh, no, am I? <laughs> yes. Up to the extreme games at Perisher. Mm. Um, so I've got, there's a beanie for you to whack on Tony Martin. It's a crazy <laughs> beanies this week. Come on, Tony. Put it on. Mick, one of those for you, too. Crikey. And uh, the extreme games are taking place up at Perisher. It's a mad capped event. Yeah, uh, get into the spirit, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. Tony, you've got to learn to be the mountain. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, <laughs> let's get serious about these extreme guys. Bobby's up there completing. And uh, our very own, the very own associate producer, John DeBar, is that keen on this project. What? When, when I thought you can't be keener than us, <laughs> surely. We've got the beanies on. keen we are. <laughs> but when, he, when I thought, listen, who's going to be the best producer to send up the snow? Who's got the sports car? Who's got everything? John DeBar, the ski man. Have a look at him. Look at him. He's been walking around the office like this for months. <laughs> Very awkward in lips. Yeah, so. Let's go, Pendo. <laughs> but, but it should be great up there. We're going to be up there doing a, <laughs> we're going to be up there doing a live cross in a couple of weeks' time, Mick. There's uh. there's sk uh, snowboarding, Australian Championships, uh, ski boarding, mountain bike downhill with spikes in them, going down the mountain, which Bob is completing. It. <laughs> Did he invent that uh, yes, particular yes. event? <laughs> but his extreme games. We'll be up there. We'll be catching up with a young bloke called Luke Fitcher, who's the, the number sooner one. Sooner the better, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're there already, Bob. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to have a look at some footage of a young bloke called Luke Fitcher, who's the uh, world number one surf snowboarding uh, quick board riders champion. He's won the European Cup the last couple of years, the Australian Cup right. in New Zealand. Let's have a look at his footage. Hesse, have you got something to bash out for this, some great snowboarding footage? Hey, I'm rocking with you, Pendo. Good on you, Hesse. <laughs> Start firing up and let's have a look at uh, Luke Fitcher in action. Thanks, Pendo. <laughs>
Jesse. Right, oh. Oh, thank you, boys. Sorry, Adam no, no, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thanks for coming in and trashing my studio. No problem. Hey. I can't, can't speak highly enough. Took you a while. I took you a couple to get into the coffee table, didn't yeah, it? I think it's the only the second time I've played a guitar. <laughs> hey, you're on the right track. Can I show you a couple of tricks I learned? Come on, let's go nuts. We have time for a couple of tricks, don't we? What you got? Uh, <laughs> hey, now, did we give out your tour dates, boys? I think, uh, what do we got here? Adelaide, you're at In Zone. I oh, no, uh, already did that one. Oh, you've already done that one. As far as I did that. Oh, did you've there. done the corner hotel, you've done no, the Esplanade. No, no, no. That tomorrow. Tomorrow, corner hotel, I'm going to see you down there for that and one. And we're heading okay. up the East Coast. I'm going to rush on with an axe and belt up your, uh, your drum kit. <laughs> well, and you'll know who I am. That's okay, it's a rented set. <laughs> it's a rented set. And you enjoying your time out here? When did you get here? Got here a couple days ago. Yeah. And i got to tell you, Australia, you're fantastic. Oh. All right. <laughs> Hooray. They obviously don't play gridiron. <laughs> thanks, boys. Thanks for coming. And, and you're mad if you don't see their live gigs because they go hey, off like a firecracker. Way, if, if, <laughs> if anybody finds his bag by the side of the road about two hours uh, out of Melbourne, $100 reward. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll give you a mullet. What's in it? <laughs> uh, I'll offer you 200 if you find it. We can't talk about that. Is it? Hello. There's Pass trouble. All right. oh. Thanks for coming in, fellas. We really appreciate it. You, you done a great job. And you're fine ambassadors for your country. All right, then. What do we got over here? What are you up to, Dave O'Neill? Are you still lurking? I still lurking. I thought lurking. the McDonald's ad was over, pal. Mate, I'm, this? I'm Give us the sausages. One sausages. Come on. All right. Sausages. Oh, wow. Yay! That was a sexy, pretty I'm sexy after dark I'm sausages. I'm trying to get the New York, New York uh, slum landlord look, and I think I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> you know, yeah, your water's not coming on, your hot water's not coming on. Let me tell you. You need a couple of gravy stains in your there. Oh, yeah. What's that you're looking at? Mate, I, got, I was just looking at Happy Days of Musical has been launched, but I just noticed here, Leo Say is back in town. Hello. Anyone got a mobile? Because I don't want to book tickets. I just had a bet with a guy that he was dead. So, um, <laughs> fantastic. More than I can Hang say. On, Happy Days the Musical. Happy Days the Musical. And guess who's playing Fonzie? Craig McLaughlin. <laughs> I just thought he was more Ralph Malf, really, you know. And to quote him, he says, I'll be cabbing my hair and doing the thumbs up, but the rest I'll make up. <laughs> I think I speak for everyone when I say, Craig McLaughlin, you're a tool. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Real, I've got a great role for him. What about a bogan in Neighbours? Oh, he's already played that one. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> so it's on fire. Oh, man. Hey, maybe they're going to do the episode where Fonzie lost his cool. Yeah. Hey, but how is Happy, like, Greece was a musical, so it's the arena. What, what songs were in Happy Days? It was the theme Monday, song. What the, else? I don't, well, I'll Al's, Al's changed. Al's now Chinese. Oh, okay. Remember that one when Al changed? No. no. no I, <laughs> God, Lord, what am I on now? Um, <laughs> It is the McDonald's got in the head. Happy Days of Musical, but the Fonz wasn't that cool anyway. You think about it, he was like a 28-year-old guy who hung around with 15-year-olds anyway. Mm. He's like the guy who stayed down in year 10 about eight times. <laughs> What's so cool about that? That's uncool. Don't you malign the Fonz in front of me. Why not? You like the Fonz? I didn't mind the Fonz. Thought Fonz, it was quite good. Fonz is quite good, I reckon. I reckon, though... <laughs> is this going out? I don't know. I don't know. I'm switching to my channel 31 yeah, mode. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know what? Arch is giving us the wind up, and I'm not sure if we're running late or it's just a question of taste. <laughs> <laughs> I think, though, okay, Happy Days Musical. I want to see Hey Dad the Musical, an Australian version. And no, we've got the cast right here. Jude could be a great Betty. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> and uh, Mick, you'd be Nudge. For sure, a bit of nudge. Oh, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Kelly. And I, of course, would be Arthur, the little fat kid, you know. <laughs> and look who's next to me. It's Mr. Kelly. Betty! <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, isn't it? That could be a that's song. It. Oh, that's right. it. That's it. And about Patchy, that. I'm working on your role, I don't know yet. Maybe one of those ill-defined brothers that came and went. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Patchy, did you have something that you wanted to show us? I looked at early in the show, Mick, that, you know, cats were getting, you know, the dud end of the stick from Dave and John Laws and so on. Mm. Uh, and uh, there's been a few promos popping up on the comedy channel lately that, uh, that give the cat, you know, probably some of their own revenge. Let's have a look at this. Daddy, where is that cat? Lucky. 
That was uh, quite amazing. You want to have just another quick look at that? Yeah, no. that sounds like I've enjoyed that. Potato, hot potato, hot potato. Potato, hot potato. Adrian. Adrian, I want to have a look at the, the cat clip again. Can, can we just have a quick look at that, Adrian? <laughs> Spaghetti, 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 spaghetti,